starting part two of building out these alien <coughs> pocket empires. Um, quick recap. <coughs> this started out as a simple scout campaign, but then due to some random rolls here in Katari, when our intrepid crew ended up here, it's already built a whole story. <coughs> um, they ran into a cube in orbit full of plant and animal specimens, and now they are about to meet the people occupying that cube. Uh, so based on that, I've branched out and said, <coughs> let's go ahead and build some pocket empires. One of my viewers recommended it. Thank you very much. Previ appreciate viewer input. So using pocket empires here, um, the first thing I had to do was <coughs> generate the main world for all of these planets up here or these systems, the main world in each of the systems. And my part one, I did show you the process of generating that, and out of that I did identify two possible home worlds, which I'm probably going to stick with. <coughs> but I did make a spreadsheet, and the criteria from Pocket Empires is <coughs> habitable and large population. So, using the power of Excel, I just said populations greater than eight or more. And of course, that's what ended up with Sasha and Sura being possible homeworlds, and <coughs> they did a good job here on the tech levels too, 13 and 12, I mean, these guys are up there, and 12 is average Imperial, so these all are serious. Now the interesting thing about Sasha is, it's only the size of a moon, but it's all water, and it's got billions. So this tells me I think we have a waterborne uh, species here. Um, so I'm going to stick with them based on the population and the tech level. Sura nicely fits with the, the aliens we've generated here. It's large, large gravity. Uh, you see there, they're at 1.4 G, bigger than Earth. Exotic air. Um, this is the interesting thing, religious dictatorship that may go in. To their meeting of our crew here, um, average imperial. Now the problem is I generated up here. I got two interesting results on the fringe. They tag these as Corsair bases. Part of the resolutions you roll for bases, and if you've got the right combo, no starport, or you roll a 12, which I did. I ended up with these two being Corsair or pirate. Um, problem here is this one of course is a zero attack level, this one's an eight, so I'm assuming and I think that's a captive population. Let's see, uh, that one is Garnia. Well, I don't have it showing, but I'm pretty sure I roll that as captive population, so I would say the Corsairs have taken this and I don't know if there's a relationship with them, but I can, I don't have to sort that out now, we're still down here. But then I look at uh, everything else I just generated, and I do get of the new planets, three of them at eight, hundreds of millions. Um, problem with this one, though, is D on the starport, ocean, tech level five. Okay. They're in the 30s, so they're not going to be an empire. And they're right here. This may be no man's land for all we know. But we do have two possibles here. They both have B starports, which are good. Bases, high port, they're nice and big. Tainted. This one's high temp. That's an interesting one to figure out. A few islands, a lot of water. This one has large oceans. And uh, tech level 10 and 9, so it looks like Tior is going to be the uh, home planet up here, so I end up with three pocket empires. Um, and the first step, I don't necessarily have the book up, but it does say when you're generating your pocket empires is roll, see if they have 1 to 12 systems, um, and you can roll 1d6 if you don't want too many, so I'm tempted to roll 1d6 here. Now the other thing I have to think about is what to do with these planets, and I'm, I'm going to think about it, but based on the moon being blown up here, and this one already generated is nothing present but wildlife, and they're trying to repopulate. I'm going to speculate there was a war in another empire here. 
and either the Sorens had to stop them just short of their home world, which would explain maybe a destroyed moon here, or maybe they combined with Sasha. Okay. And again, I'm assuming jump one for all of these empires, so I'm not going to let any empires re uh, cross a jump two, um, which may have to be dealt with once we talk about these pirates here, but not now. So I think what I'm going to do is 1d6. Now the problem with the Sasha, they are waterborne, and guess what? This planet, um, the hydrographic is zero. If we look at Sasha. Uh, Sasha, yeah, is almost all water. But then if we look at the other planet here, I don't have it up at Dira, and there's a nine. This is nice, so they're going to probably have this one. It's got a seven hydrographic. I think that's yeah, that's the last. So that's the last number is seven. This one has no water. So this may be why they haven't expanded as much. They kind of hit the wall here with a desert planet. But they've got high enough tech D, holy smoke, to probably have engineered a solution and they probably have a military base. That's what this is here. So the question is, do they have any of these? Um, my guess is I probably have them expand that way. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my, yep, I still have it, my handy dandy dice roller here. And I'm going to roll for 1d6 for the number of systems they have. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, for Pete's sake, six. <laughs> oh, they make that hard. Well, let's see what we can do here. If they have six. One, two, three, four. This was a tough one. This one's got six. This one's got five. This one's got eight. So I think what we're going to do... I think they're going to have allied against the invaders. And they were literally stopped right here. So Sura, interesting. I'm going to roll for them next. But let me go ahead and uh, get my thingy. They're going to be yellow. Yep, that's them. So we're going to have Coretta. We're going to have Deary. Go ahead and give them Corson. And give them Hyri. And I don't know about this one. That's a five. I may just limit them to this. Because we'll see if these guys need them. Then we'll roll for these guys. 1d6. They've got four. Uh, they are the red zones. Um, let's give them here. Uh, no, let's give them here. That's going to basically change things. But they did claim it. And then where's the fourth one here? Uh, let's see. Starport-wise, no starport got destroyed. A Bravo starport, a Delta starport, and a Delta starport. What's above them here? Another Delta starport. I haven't resolved this one. This one's kind of crazy. Um, and they're Charlie. Uh, let me think about this here. One more. Yeah, I think I'm going to get Brania. And there is going to be some sort of relationship between these two empires. Um, then we'll come up here. And, uh, well, based on all of this, i got to roll 2d6 for them. I'm going to assume they weren't close to anybody. So they could really expand. So let's go ahead and do 2 for these guys. Not 23. They don't know everything. Six. That's a reasonable number. Um, they got the two Bravos for sure. Let's do that. So I got this guy with the Bravo in the military base. I got this guy. Uh, they got this guy. Oh, perfect. Now the weird one is this one. Train show with a high board. Let's say they got this. Let's not count the home world. I'm going to cheat a little. Let's 
There we go. Gotta hold down the shift key for that. So now I got one, two, three, four, five. Um, I do want to give him this one just because it's got a base. And this is a scout base. That seems like the common. There we go. And our friends won't be running into this one anytime soon, necessarily. Let's see if I can move this. Anyway, there we go. And then these over here are not explored. This is the extent. And I did say Tior would be the home world here. They have to expand this way and this way. And to be honest, uh, I'll say they haven't quite encountered these people. Okay. So, there we are. That's the first step. Generate how big they are. OCD here. I don't like that there. Why can't I move here? Shift key down. Wow, this just doesn't want to. Oh well, I'll fight that later. Uh, so yeah, we've got the Empire of Teor, the Blaster. We've got the Empire of Sasha, Waterborn. And the Empire of Sura. And I don't know what. I'll have to figure out a relationship, but. Now, the only place to expand here is this way, but they may have jumped too, which means they could expand that way. Yeah, so I'm going to say, well, we'll see. I'll think about it some more, but I don't really want to trap our scouts with empires everywhere. But uh, I am going to say maybe there was a war, and... Uh, <coughs> the enemy was stopped right here, barely, by these. And I don't know what happened to them coming down here. So, I think we're good. That's 12 minutes. That's a nice bite-sized chunk. We have our three empires. We have potentially some pirates up here. So we have quite the playing area here. Um, and I'm going to reserve this for the scouts. But this becomes naval. Literally, the next system after the scout base is another empire unclaimed. Actually, two. So, that could be interesting. And then I'm going to... The next step is you uh, actually, I think, generate the uh, that whole series of characteristics. Uh, empire factors. Number of worlds, military power, economic power prestige and each individual world has its own characteristics so I believe and then world history so there's a little work to be done there so we may start with these empire in the next video and dig into the uh, pocket empires now and do the next step of uh, getting more detailed info about these planets um, Wow do I need to give that one to bear See, the, yeah, this, wow, this this one's tough. I mean, these got wasted, and all I've really got is this. So this is effectively a two-planet empire. And uh, Zasha helped them out, but I'll have to generate both of these to see how they relate to each other in more detail. But that's the next step. Generate this one first, because I only have to worry about these two worlds. And generate this one. And then generate this one, but it hasn't yet encountered, and there's a nice little 1930s world in between them before they actually encounter. So, and then our scout people, we can play out the first contact once we know more about this empire. So, there we go. Nice short video here. We got part two of identifying the alien empires, which we have done. Three empires. And the next step will be using pocket empires to get the details on their worlds and their empire as a whole. So, thanks for listening, and uh, we will see you at the next recording where we explore the empire of Sura. Have a good one.